In this lecture, I'll talk about how high inflation can affect economic growth. Now, there are two ways of thinking about how inflation can affect economic growth. The first way in terms of aggregate demand, and the second way in terms of productive capacity. Productive capacity. Okay. So let's look at aggregate demand first of all. We'll see how high inflation can actually affect economic growth in terms of aggregate demand. Now what we're assuming in this um, theorized concept is that economic growth or supply, so total supply or national aggregate supply is affected by demand. Now as we know economic growth is the increase in the volume of goods and services produced in the economy. So it's an increase in aggregate supply in the economy. It's not the increase in GDP because GDP may understate or overstate economic growth depending on inflation. So economic growth is occurs when there is an increase in aggregate supply. So how would this be affected by aggregate demand? So before we talked about microeconomics and the microeconomic concept of consumer sovereignty. So if we should aggregate this over the entire economy, the concept of consumer sovereignty should still hold. So consumer sovereignty is where producers produce determining determined by so a aggregate supply is determined by aggregate demand. So producers will only produce so long as there is demand for a product. So let's look at how inflation affects aggregate demand. So we know that aggregate demand is a component of consumption expenditure, investment expenditure, government expenditure, export minus imports. Or we could write this as net exports. These two are very much interchangeable. So what happens to consumption when we have high inflation? Obviously, when inflation increases, consumption decreases because we can consume less of the same product or the same basket of goods and services with the same income. So consumption decreases. And this is because, say, we have $50,000. As a brief example, we have $50,000. We can buy $50,000 worth of goods and services. If inflation is 10%, this $50,000 can only buy 50 over 1 plus 0 0.1, which would equal 45,000, around $45,000. I think some more accurately is around 45,454. Let's just assume that this is around $45,000. So using the same basket of goods and services, or using the same amount of money, we can buy a smaller basket of goods and services. And so what this means is that consumption would go down overall. So we know that consumption expenditure would go down. And also because people tend to save more when the economic climate is more uncertain. So when high inflation occurs, we're not going to be sure about our job security. We're not going to be sure about our future incomes. So we're going to be tending to save more. And also exports would decrease because our international competitiveness declines. And similarly, investment expenditure will decrease as well because we're moving towards a more speculative form of investment. And we'll talk about this concept in terms of our productive capacity here as well. So they're, they're basically interlinked, but you can think of them as two separate concepts or two separate ideas of how high inflation can affect economic growth. So overall now we can see uh, three arrows here. We see that aggregate demand declines threefold. And because aggregate demand decreases, producers will respond to this by producing less as well. So because aggregate demand decreases, aggregate supply would also decrease. Pretty, drawn, pretty poorly drawn arrow. 
Okay, so aggregate supply would decrease as well threefold. So what this means is that because aggregate demand is so low in times of high inflation, aggregate supply would also decline and therefore since economic growth is a function of an increase in aggregate supply, therefore economic growth will also decline in, t in times of high inflation. Okay, now let's look at the second concept of how productive capacity can also be affected. So now we know that economic growth equals aggregate supply. And now we know that aggregate supply, or how much we produce, is a component of our resources that we have available. So we have three different types of resources that contribute to aggregate supply. So firstly we have labour, secondly we have capital, so this includes machinery and the, the equipment the labour resources uses to produce goods and services, and finally we have our efficiency resources. So this is our productivity, or our secondary factor of production. So we have primary factors of in production here, primary, and here we have secondary. But all in all, they all contribute to economic growth. So what happens in times of high inflation? We know that businesses seek to maximise their profits, right? And so now we know that because aggregate demand is so low, they're not selling as much goods and services as they were before. So what they're going to do is they're going to invest less in productive capital and more in speculative shares. So speculative options mean um, securities, bonds, uh, futures, options, derivatives, all those sort of sorts of shares and um, financial instruments. So they're financial debt instruments. So speculative options include all sorts of financial debt instruments. So they're not going to invest in, say, capital or they're not going to invest in research and development to improve their efficiency because there's no need to improve their efficiency because aggregate demand is so low. So they're just going to invest in financial debt instruments such as government bonds, securities and share portfolios which receive a higher rate of return and because we know businesses seek to maximize their profits this would then prove a more attractive option. And so this is sucking out our productive capacity and because we now see that capital is declining because we're not replacing the capital that we're using and also efficiency is declining relative to the rest of the world we're going to see that economic growth prospects in the future would also decrease. So inflation is bad in the sense that it also negatively affects our economic growth now in terms of aggregate demand as well as in the future in terms of our productive capacity. So inflation as we know it now is very bad in terms of economic growth and our future living standards because our living standards include material and material includes the consumption of goods and services. And so if we have lower economic growth in the future that means we consume less goods and services, or fewer goods, less, fewer goods and services, I should say, and therefore decrease or deteriorate our living standards as a whole.